Barnum's dream, as she's called now, is sitting in one of P.T. Barnum's warehouses in Bridgeport, Connecticut. She's been undergoing refurbishment, but in a little while, we'll see her first trial run. Before Barnum got his hands on her, the English called her the Terrible, and the French, La Trible. Yeah, I know, my French is terrible. Anyway, it's a name that's spelled the same in French and English, and was the only one that Queen Victoria and Napoleon III could agree upon. It was built jointly by them to fight in the Crimean War, one of the few ships to ever fly the flags of two countries. At that time, she truly was a ship. Napoleon III later bought her from Queen Victoria and converted her to the monster she is today to fight a tank train that was giving him trouble in the Franco-Prussian War. If you want to find out how old P.T. got his hands on it and how Napoleon used Captain Nemo's science team to design its weapons and why it finally totally disappeared, you'll have to go to my research notes in my blog, which you'll find at the uh, end of the video. She's 250 feet tall at the peak of the telescope and over 300 feet long. She weighs in a little bit over 50,000 tons. She's driven by two steam boilers, one on the deck and one under the laser, or as they called it, the death ray. Both boilers are vented into the same side stack. The steam engine is double action with a 4-foot bore and a 12-foot stroke. It turns a primary flywheel that's 24 feet in diameter and weighs over 12 tons. This turns the main drive wheel, the Gatlin gun, the Gatlin gun feeder, an electric generator, and lifts the splinter netting or armor on each side of the ship when it goes into battle. She wasn't designed for speed. In fact, she's rather slow. She was designed for her massive destructive power. The captain's cabin at the rear doesn't fit the style of the rest of the ship. It is a reflection of the height of the Victorian era. Beautiful, impractical, and totally vulnerable. It was added by the French in the second rebuild. And you know the French. There must be some beauty in every beast. And the beast is Daedalus, a mythical sea creature spotted in 1848. They're about to start the trial run. Before they do, you may need to see some individual components so you'll understand what their functions are. First, the shites. Steam hydraulically involved thermal engines. We would call them robots. They got their nickname from the Irish engineers because they were always breaking down. They were needed to move the massive controls that humans couldn't do alone. There are two functioning shites on the ship now and two are in repair. This is the captain's shite. He's called Sam Max. He controls the major functions of the ship. The electrical contacts in front of him control the lights and open and close the main cannon door in the front of the ship. The arm on the left drops chain mail on each side of him for protection. The arm on the right engages a clutch which raises a splinter net in to protect the ship. The second shite is called Ashtray. He and his driver control the death ray. Before firing the ray, he lowers and closes a blast shield for protection. Ashtray got his nickname because everything that the death ray hits when it's finished can be put in an ashtray. This clutch engages the Gatling gun. The red arrow points at a roller that acts as a tensioner on the belt that engages the transmission for the gun. This mechanism feeds the shells to the Gatling gun. When the captain pulls the right lever we saw before, it engages this pulley wheel that then lifts the side armor. The telescope at the top can rotate 360 degrees. Ashtray's driver looks through the telescope through this lens. There's an aiming grid embedded in the lens. They're about to start the steam engine. We get to see all of the ship's functions, including the main front cannon fired at the end. Before they can start the trial run, they have to close the main side loading door. The boiler fires have been lit, but when you're trying to heat 50,000 gallons of water, it takes a little while to build up a head of steam. We'll take a look to see uh, how she's doing. <laughs> Pressure must be up because 24,000 pounds just started spinning. At full power, she will turn 600 revolutions per minute.
Now she's cooking. Let's look inside. The captain's coming out. Uh, he's going to test the running lights. Next, he'll drop the chain wheel. He engages the clutch to raise the arm on the side of the ship. The armor is heavy. It puts a real strain on the steam engine. This pulley wheel is gigantic. It's over 36 feet in diameter. You need that kind of diameter to provide the ratio to lift the side armor. One last look as the cables and chains wind up. And now the fun part. We're going to fire 32 cannons, two Gatling guns, and a death ray. They sight these guns in using a range finder. The steam harpoon is under repair. They just test the range finder. But the side cannons work just fine. So do the side turrets. Engaging the rear Gatlin gun transmission. The rear Gatlin gun uses high pressure steam to fire its shells. The ball turret right the cannon and Gatlin gun. And here goes the death ray. Find a good enough song for me, friend. A good enough song for you. A song to sing on and never play when everything is through. Cause there'll be time enough for thinking. There'll be time enough to find a good enough song for leaving love behind. 